ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الامين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته الى يوم الدين ثم اما بعد عن ابي رقيه تميم بن اوس الداري رضي الله تعالى عنه ان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الدين النصيحه قلنا لمن قرا لله ولكتابه ولرسوله ولائمه المسلمين وعامتهم حديث صحيح رواه مسلم the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as it comes in a hadith of abu ruqayya tamim bin aws ad-dari that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said verily the religion is an nasiha now an nasiha generally and typically is translated as good advice sincerity so on and so forth and this enters into the meaning of an nasiha however when we know the reality of what is meant and what is intended by an nasiha then we will better understand this narration ala kulli hal when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that the deen the religion is an nasiha they asked the sahaba those who were present who heard this they asked qulna liman we said to who so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said to allah to his book to the leaders of the muslim the muslims to allah to his book to his messenger to the leaders of the muslims and to the common folk so it was a nasiha to the five that were mentioned so how do we understand what is nasiha as a hadith that comes in muslim the the, the ulama they mention that haqiqatun nasiha shar'an that the reality of nasiha in the legislation qiyamun nasih it is the establishment of the one who is giving this nasiha the one who is exhibiting and displaying this nasiha a min al abd qiyamul abd it is the establishment of this of the servant of the slave na'am qiyamul abd bima li ghayrihi min haqqin it is that the slave he establishes the rights of other than him that he establishes the rights of other than him this is nasiha that we establish the rights to others So the rights that have to be given to Allah we establish the rights of Allah we establish the rights of the book of Allah we establish the rights of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we establish the rights to the muslim rulers and we establish the rights to the general masses of the muslims this is what it means that the deen is an nasiha so from the establishment of those rights is the establishment of the right of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the establishment of the rights to Allah ta'ala's book is that we reflect and we study and we learn the meanings of Allah ta'ala's book and especially those ayat and those surah those verses and those chapters that are oft recited that we know and we understand what are the meanings and we reflect upon those meanings and from these chapters that are oft recited by the muslims then verily it is the chapter of falaq Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in his noble chapter bismillah arrahman arrahim qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq and say i seek refuge with the lord of al falaq wal falaq the ulama they mention huwa as subh that the falaq what it means it means the morning time the daybreak the dawn this is falaq now when one reflects over this when one reflects over the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they ponder over the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is something that must muslims we have to do that we have to be reflective and look at the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore ponder over the one who created these things because this is from ihsan as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam either sa'ala hu jibril alayhi salatu wassalam an ihsan fa qala nabiy sallallahu alaihi wasallam an ta'budu allaha ka'annaka tara fa in lam takun tara fa innahu yarak when jibril alayhi salatu wassalam he questioned the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about ihsan the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said it is to worship allah as if you see him and if you do not see him then verily he sees you the ulama they explain and they mention 
that the Prophet Sallallahu in explaining Ihsan, he showed us two levels of Ihsan. And the first of them is that he mentioned was Mushahada. And ta'abdullah ka'annaka tara To worship Allah as if you see him. This is mushahada. What does that mean? That means that when you look at the likes in this example of the daybreak, of the dawn, the sun as it's coming over the horizon, the beautiful colors that are present inside of the sky, so on and so forth, that in the splendor, in the beauty of that, it reminds you of the power and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It reminds you of the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah ta'ala, He is the one who created this sun. He is the one who created this earth. He is the one who created the sky. He is the one who created these beautiful colors. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who has set these things into motion. Then looking at this, it reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It reminds you of La ilaha illallah. And therefore, and as such, when we seek refuge, we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of the ibadah belongs into Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when one reflects at the beauty of the sunset or the sunrise, then it leads them to one conclusion. And that is, La ilaha illallah. That none has the right to be worshipped in the truth except Allah. So therefore, it is only befitting that what? That we seek refuge in the all-powerful, almighty, all-wise creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala, he goes on to say, Man sharri ma khalaq. That say, and seek refuge in Allah from the evil of what is created. Naam. The ulama, they mention, al Hafiz ibn Kathir, he mentions, a Man sharri jami' al-makhluqat. From the evil of all created things. That we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of all created things. Wal min ulama. They mention that what is meant by this is that we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Jahannam. What Iblis wa dhurriyatuhu is that we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the hellfire, from Iblis, the shaytan, and from his progeny, the shayateen, the evil jinn, that we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from their evil. Ya ibadullah, when we reflect and we look at the likes of this, we see something that is tremendous we see something that we need and that is that we are constantly connecting ourselves unto allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking allah ta'ala for those things in which we desire and seeking refuge in allah from those things in which we fear because all of the ibadah it belongs unto allah so when you ask ask allah and when you seek help and aid seek the help aid and assistance of allah and when you seek refuge then seek refuge in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala هذا أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولجميع المسلمين فاستغفروا فإنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah Allah Ta'ala, He goes on in His tremendous chapter to show us that which in which we are to be seeking refuge from. Allah Ta'ala, He says, وَمَنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ And that we seek refuge in Allah Ta'ala from the darkness as it comes and what comes inside of the darkness. The ulama, they mention, قَالَ مُجَاهِدْ غاسق غاسق الليل إذا وقب غروب الشمس. That what is meant by غاسق it means the night time, the darkness of the night time when the sun has departed. The darkness of the night time when the sun has departed. Because it gets dark when the sun goes down. And when it gets dark, different things start to happen. There is a potential for different type of harm. Whether that harm comes from the human beings who take advantage of the darkness and they exploit this darkness and they cause trouble and problem to human beings by robbing them, by stealing them, by burglarizing their houses and their properties and so on and so forth. Things that they wouldn't do in broad daylight, but now they do it under the shade and veil of night. Or likewise, the, the, the harms that may come from the nocturnal predatory animals that may cause harm to human beings. That we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the mischief that goes on when it gets extremely dark. وَقَالَ and the ulama, they mention as it has come on Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that what is intended by this is a kawkab, meaning that when the stars are dark, meaning that those early 
nights during the month or those later nights in the month where the moon it wins and it's very dark outside so much so that there is very little light that's coming from the moon nor from the stars where it's extremely dark the most darkest nights during the 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 month that we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the dark from the dark and what takes place during the dark at the darkest times of night now because there is a mischief as aforementioned that it happens therein not like what happens in broad daylight. It is connecting over and over and over ourselves unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thus you see the tawheed over and over and over. Because the Quran, bila shakwi bila ray, this is kitabu tawheed. This is the book of tawheed from the beginning to the end. Everything that is between the beginning and the end is a tawheed pointing us to the true monotheism of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how we are to implement it inside of our lives. And also, from those things in which we are to seek refuge in Allah ta'ala from وَمِن شَرِّ النَّفَثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ and, that we, and, and, and from the evil of those who blow inside of the knots. From the evil of those who blow inside of the, the knots. وَقَالَ الْعُلَمَاءِ مَعْنَا أَيْ سَوَاحِرِ meaning the sorcerers, those who deal with magic and it's incumbent that as muslims we know we understand the reality of this and that there is some reality or there's reality to magic and to sorcery now that there are those who seek to harm others by way of sorcery by way of magic spells so on and so forth so we are to seek refuge in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the likes of this and also this is a reminder that we have to be of those who are constantly students, constantly studying, constantly learning, that we strive to learn the tafsir of the Qur'an, we strive to learn the meanings of that hadith, and we strive to learn those sciences that will aid and assist us in accomplishing this, and from that, the science of the Arabic language. Because you find in some of the translations, it is translated as, and from the evil of the witches when they blow upon knots, or the evil of the sorceresses yani, uh, when they blow upon knots. And this is not something that is restricted to just the sorcery of women or that which could be categorized as witches, so on and so forth. But rather what is intended by nafathat, yani al-anfus, al-anfus al-nafathat. It's referring to the souls, meaning those souls in which they blow upon these knots. So although the word it comes in its feminine form, which is, which is appropriate here due to the meaning of the ayah, it is not that which is restricted just to females, but also what enters into it for yashmal al-rijal wa nisa it enters into it men and women whoever does sorcery whether it is a man or whether it is a woman and we are seeking refuge in Allah from the evil of the sorcerers when they blow upon knots blowing upon knots meaning that they are putting spells by way of blowing upon these knots upon individuals so on and so forth that we seek refuge in Allah from that now this is incumbent and we will see the connection even more so as it comes to the last ayah of this tremendous chapter Allah Ta'ala he says وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدٍ and from the evil of the envier when he displays his envy. And Hasid, the one who is an envier, he is one who is sick. He is one who has problems in his aqidah. And he is one who has problems in his methodology. How does he have problems in his aqidah? Because as the ulama they mentioned, or the many mentions, Al Hasid, who are the yakra who na'mat Allah alayk. He is the one who he hates the bounty of Allah that Allah gave to you. He is one who he hates. The bounty that Allah has given to others. So he is one who has what? He has a problem with qadr. He has a problem with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how he has problems in his aqidah. He has problems with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because masha'Allah can, wa ma lam yasha lam yakun. Whatever Allah wills is, whatever he does not will is not. So the envier who is envious because this brother has a car that he doesn't have forgets the fact that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has blessed him with that car. This brother who is envious that is jealous because this one has a wife that they really want. He is one who hates the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he has a problem with the fact that Allah has decreed that he marry her because he wanted her. You understand? You see? This is an individual who is sick. He is sick at his core. He has a problem with the, the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has given to this one, which he feels Allah should have gave it to him. And because of this malice, because of this malice, it would lead one to strive to harm others by plotting against them, by scheming against them, by striving to hurt them. But also, 
Because these are things that maybe we can see coming. Now, I'm a person's plots, a person's evil words, a person's bad disposition. We can see it coming. You understand? But there's also an evil that possibly may emanate from the likes of these individuals. In this, you will see the, the connection with the aforementioned ayah that we maybe we won't see it coming. And that is, as the ulama, they explain also from the, from, from, from the evils of the hasid, of the one who is envious, is the sharr of his ayn, eh? al ayn. The evil eye. They may put the evil eye upon someone. And the evil eye is true. The evil eye is true. And we know the evil eye is true and its effects are true. The evil eye could affect any one of us. Whether it be ill things that happen to us in our bodies. Because a person gets sick or they may die. Or whether it be because of things that may happen to our property. Now my property gets damaged, it gets lost, it gets, you know, whatever the case may be, we lose it, so on and so forth. Because the one who is envious, not only does he hate the fact that you have what he wants, but he wants you to lose it. It's not that he appreciates what you have and say, mashallah, you know, alhamdulillah. No, he wants you to lose it. So if he's envious because of you're married to your wife, he wants you to divorce her. He wants that situation to be destroyed. Likewise, for those women who are envious because they are loving of men who are not belonging to them, they want the marriage to, to, to be ruined. They want, they want to destroy the relationship. If they're envious because of the car, they want you to crash your car. If they're envious because of your health, because of your beauty, because you're, you're handsome, so on and so forth, they want something bad to happen to you. You become crippled, old, ugly, whatever the case may be. This is the evil of this person. They want to see you lose the good that you have. So therefore, there comes what? An ayn. They may put upon you the evil eye. They may put upon you the evil eye. The evil eye is real. There comes a hadith in Muslim that Jibreel, alayhi salam, alayhi salam, he came to the Prophet, alayhi salam, فَقَالْ يَا Muhammad, أَشْتَقَيْتْ He came to the Prophet, alayhi salam, and the Prophet, alayhi salam, wasn't feeling well. He came to the Prophet, alayhi salam, and he said, do you, do you, you, you have some difficulty? You're experiencing some difficulty? فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ نَعَمْ He said yes. So Jibreel, he did ruqya upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said, Bismillah, arqiq. He said, in the name of Allah, do ruqya upon you. This is a form of medicine by reciting the, the Quran and, and the likes over the one who was sick. Jibreel, making dua unto Allah صلى الله عليه says, may ruqya, in the name of Allah, may ruqya upon you. من كل شيء يؤذيك from everything that may harm you. من شر كل نفس from the harm of every evil person. Woman Ain has it. And from the evil eye of the envier. And from the evil eye of the envier. Because the evil eye of the envier can strike a person and then they get sick. Can strike a person, then they start getting pain for no reason. Can strike a person and then bad things happen. He said so. Or from the eye, the evil eye of the one who was envious. Allah yashfiq. Bismillah arqiq. May Allah give you healing in the name of Allah I make ruqya upon you so this is a proof and evidence that the evil eye is real and just as it was possible that it could reach and touch and ill affect the Prophet وسلم, and hence the dua of Jibreel وسلم, one of us could be affected by the evil eye so now with that being the case how does it refer to our life day in and day out I give you one small piece of advice and this is as relates to the utilization of social media be very careful what you put online people have a problem they want to document their whole life online they eat something good they take a picture they put it on Instagram they go somewhere on vacation and take a picture put it on Instagram they have a get a new car take a picture put it on Instagram so on and so forth or whatever they, 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 the outlet may be the platform may be now understand there are people out there that don't want good for you there are people out there who are jealous and envious of you when you parade the bounties in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you in this manner you open yourself up potentially for the person who is jealous and envious to put the evil eye on you be careful these things are real take your guard take your precaution be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that which he has bestowed upon you and be careful of those who may intend and want harm and evil for you. أسأل الله تعالى أن يوفقني وإياكم لما يحبه ويرضى ويجعلنا من الذين يستمعون قولا فيتبعون أحسنا ويجعلنا من من إذا أعطي شكر وضبطوا لي صبر وإذا أثنب استغفر فإن هؤلاء ثلاث عنوان السعادة ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار 
اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى هذا يا عباد فأقيموا الصلاه